beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ Our King Salud. What a beautiful name it is Nothing can stand against What a beautiful name it is The name Didn't want heaven without us So Jesus, you brought heaven down Our sin was great, your love was greater And what can separate us now? What a wonderful name bench over there, but I'm not ready to go. Good morning to you guys. Grace and peace. If you're not ready to go, that's when the best time to put you in there. That's what coach told me. I threw you out to the wolves. Throw you out to the wolves. Sink or swim, right? Good morning to you guys. Grace and peace. I hope everybody had a, a fantastic night. I'm going to tell you guys I slept absolutely wonderful. I uh, did not even want to get up. Not for nothing. Um, it's like the only reason I'm getting up is if the rapture happens. <laughs> We're going to be in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 this morning. But in the meantime, uh, we're going to be over in Philippians chapter 2, guys. 
So if you got your Bibles, flip over to Philippians chapter 2. Uh, we're going to start in verse 1. Uh, so I hope everybody had a fantastic night. I see our sister Kat was live all night. Uh, I don't know if I see the comments are turned off and uh, the lights are on, but nobody's home. So I don't know if they fell asleep over there or um, what's going on. Uh, but we are back at it, guys. We are alive and well this morning. Uh, we are, in fact, one day closer to being with our Lord and Savior. Oh, okay. Ah, I see what's going on. Aha. Uh -huh. Mm hmm. That's what it looks like. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We were just chatting. Oh, yeah. You turned the comments off at four. At four? Y'all had fun? All right, all right. Well, guess what? Fun and games is over. If this is the first time you met me, get you an ink pen and a pad and a pen. We're going to be covering a lot of verses rather quickly, guys. And the reason is because we got a lot of this uh, area to cover in a short amount of time. Uh, the truth is, guys, time is running out and you're not prepared for the judgment seat. Uh, my job is to prepare you as best as possible to stand before God to give an account of the things that you've done. Uh, so this morning, guys, uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. If there be any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, one mind, let nothing be done through strife, or vainglory, but of lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. That's not what we're seeing out here today, guys. What we're seeing today are people that are biting and devouring each other, uh, being consumed with it, as a matter of fact, arguing back and forth with people. Lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Let look not on every man on his own things, but every man on the things of others. Let not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as much only in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you to both will and do it of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice of the service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause do ye joy and rejoice with me. You see that? Holding forth the word of light. The word. that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. That day of Christ is what we're just about to be at. A lot of people don't understand where we are in our Bible or what's going on with chronological order. So they kind of just make it up as they go. Remember, Daniel was told, just start calling yourself Reverend. That's what everybody else does. What we find is most people who go to seminary schools, most people who come out with theological degrees, uh, most people who are going to, to preacher camp or whoever, Bob Jones University. I rode by Bob Jones University on the way um, down back from Atlanta. I said, man,
You know that? You know what you know what it means when you got a university? You got man's approval. You got man's approval when you go into a university. You want to learn about the Word of God? Do you think you need to go to school? Just like people want to learn about the Word of God, they think they need to go to church. If you want to learn about the Word of God, why don't you open your Bible? I mean, I'm just saying, you know. What better way is there for you to learn what's going on inside of your Bible than you to start reading it? Just like you don't go somewhere and have somebody tell you how to ride a 10-speed, do you? You don't go to a 10-speed school, do you? No. The first thing you do is you have a problem with your balance. And then you say, oh, man, I remember I rode a bike as a kid. It's kind of like pick it back up where we left off. The only way to get better at riding the 10-speed is to spend time on the 10-speed. And so like, man, these guys out here, some of these guys on these videos are in the four-wheelers and the dirt bikes, and they're throwing them all back and riding wheelies straight down the street. You don't get those skills just out of the air. These are people that have spent time, time. That young man has spent so much time on that dirt bike, he can flip that thing back and ride it down one wheel and wave at your mama while he's doing it. That's what you call time. He's comfortable. He's extremely comfortable with what he's doing. How comfortable are you when it comes to delivering the message? People can see that you're nervous. They can see either one of you're upset or you're angry or you're frustrated. They can see, are we peace? You know, what's going on with us? Well, we're human beings are what we are. Some days we're angry. Some days we're happy. Some days we're sad. Some days happy, slappy, sad. What do you want? I can't wait to say happy, sleepy, sad. That's the, that's, the, that's the side effects of it, right? He ain't dead. He getting ready to wake up and eat up your whole kitchen in an hour is what's going to happen. Hungry, happy, sleepy. That's the side effects. What are the side effects from reading the Bible? Hope. Joy. Direction. Comfort, peace, hmm. foreign language to some of these people out here. And you say, hey, what do you get? What we find... Um, Brother Dan is most of the people that come out of the colleges are Bible correctors. They're not Bible believers. So just like we're seeing, oh, it says actually in the Greek, it says that we're in the Hebrew, it says in the strong concordance. You know, this is what you're doing. They're taking away from the next verse, they're going to the concordance and they get themselves are, uh, are, are the final answer, not the Bible. Uh, one word in the Hebrew language can have up to 28 different meanings. There's about 18, 19 different Greek manuscripts. So Satan's job would be to get you outside of God's word and argue over what word should be there, right? Well, our Bible has what we call italic words in it. Some of the people might not have known that there are italic words in our Bible. These italic letters are where the holes in the scrolls were. The uh, translators of the King James Holy Bible thought enough of you and me as believers to let us know where they made the changes in God's word at. The italic letters or the holes in the scrolls, so they decided what word should go in that hole. And from since then on, people have been arguing about whether they were correct or not. I've seen people say that the scholars weren't qualified uh, to translate God's word. Uh, from where I'm sitting at, were they, were they really scholars? What is considered a scholar? You know, then after the times I was trying to say, well, where am I on that list at? You know, to even compare myself to a scholar would be like, who do you think you are, right? No, I'm not a scholar. I'm just a brother in Christ. That's it. No more, no less. Didn't pay for one bit of information that I've been sharing with you guys. Everything I've received, everything I've learned, I, I've got it for free. God's word is free. It's for people that want to want to know about God and, and uh, what's in his Bible. That's where the word says that uh, the word of God works effectively in those who believe. So the word of God works effectively because we believe, just like Paul said, work out your own salvation. We're telling you the answers, guys. Atonement was made at Calvary. We're saved by trusting in the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
For some people to come to terms with that, it's a little bit harder than others. Some people, it's a relief. You mean all I've got to do is trust that Jesus Christ died for my sins at Calvary? Yes. And they're like, oh man, this is so, so good news. I, I mean, the weight of the world is off of being finally on Jesus where it should be at. Then other people get mad, right? They get mad because how dare you say that all we got to do is trust in what Jesus Christ did on the cross, Danny. We've got to pick up our cross. We can't continue to live in sin, Danny. So you got somebody that's studying their Bible that knows what took place at Calvary and somebody that's being taught by a man, right? Taught by a man. You know, first and foremost, we say God was in Christ, reconciling the world, no longer imputing the trespasses unto them, has committed unto us the message of reconciliation. And the very next words out of their stupid mouth are, but you can't do what you want to do, can you? You're no longer a servant of the letter. You're now a servant of righteousness. Now, now righteousness is what you are. So what are we doing? When we open this big mouth, we are exposing the motive. Why are you serving God? Why are you in this denomination, this box? Why are you in this chair? We love God. No other answer. Jesus Christ provided the way. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. If somebody has a problem with trusting in Jesus Christ, guys, this is a dead giveaway. Why won't you trust in Jesus Christ? It can only be two answers. One, you either know or you don't know. And if you don't know, now you know, right? Jesus Christ is the first, the last, the beginning, the end, the alpha, the omega, the great I am. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The word became flesh, so they don't know. They don't know who Jesus is. You know why? Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Y'all should have seen it going off yesterday. These people, some of these people never heard people speak in tongues before. So it was like I was sitting there listening to, uh, I got four shundalas in a row. It was shundalala, and then it said shundalala, and it did it four times. And these people are going, what is that? I've never heard somebody shundalala before. You see where I'm getting? Shundalalala is self-seeking, right? Nobody knows what he said or what he did but me. God was in Christ reconciling the world for the love of Christ constrains us. That's scripture. The love of Christ constraineth us. We're not forced to serve, uh, to, to serve God. You got the option every single day. Can you get up? Can you serve God? Can you study out God's word or not? Do you choose to retain God in your mind and in your thoughts? And as your day goes on, do you talk to God or not? Did Jesus Christ raise from the dead or not? It's that simple. Very good, Nate. That's exactly what they are. Glorifying in their flesh. Glorifying in someone else. Right? Right? Just like this guy right here, EPJ, EJP, whatever, tongues of fire. Nothing is going to edify you as a member of the body of Christ more than sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. You got tongues of fire. This is a declaration. You don't need to read your Bible. Why? Because you've placed your garbage over pureness, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfreighted. That's clear as a bell. Clarity. Are you edifying other members of the body of Christ or are you bringing glory to your own belly? It's that clear. Now, what we're dealing with, guys, are people that don't know. What do you mean? I've been taught to set down and make up my own personal language with God that somebody else out there is supposed to be able to translate. They're mocking God. 
you would really like to stop and think from my point of view, do they really fear God, right? Do you really fear God when you're going to go out there and misrepresent him by saying some words that's not even out in this book? If you're going to represent God, you say exactly what he said, no more, no less. That's it. Why? Because if I say something else, it might be what God didn't say. Then what? Then I'm wrong. So you can be right and then be wrong. Kind of like sometimes, you know, we take two steps forward, two steps back. Sometimes we shoot ourselves in the foot. Sometimes we shoot ourselves in the foot and then how to, to hop on one leg. Tie your hand behind your back. Is that how you're working out your salvation? The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. God wants all men to come to the knowledge of the truth. For all men to be saved. This is why we're preaching the cross. You'll start noticing things are there and things that are not there. What's not there from shunda la 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 la. Have you caught on yet? Pay attention. From here on out to the rest of the time, anytime you hear -la 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 -la, the death, the burial, the resurrection of missing, like Miss Nelson. Missing, not a part of the vocabulary. You mean to tell me you got 44,000 denominations thinking that they're the nation of Israel? That are going to burn up? What happens if you try to Show up at that wedding and your name's if you're and you're not supposed to be there. You think you're just gonna show up at the wedding? Just like you decided one day you was reverend, one day you decided you was a, a, a deacon, one day you just decided you was a prophet or an apostle. I just decided one day. I just decided. Is that working out your salvation with fear and trembling? You've labeled yourself a prophet. In the body of Christ, there's neither male nor female, bond or free, Jew nor Gentile. We're all one in Christ. So when you go and you put a title on yourself, you've just alienated yourself from the rest of the body of Christ is what you've done. We're dead. Our life is hidden in Christ. But for some reason, you're a prophet, right? We were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel while God was speaking to you. We're one. One Lord, one faith, one walk, one talk. Is God speaking through the prophets? Law of the prophets came until John. Well, they go over to Ephesians and say, he gave prophets. He gave apostles there. Did you see that? He gave. No, they changed it to he gave, he's giving. What's the difference between gave and giving? Listen, now, if I gave you $10 yesterday and you're asking me to give you $10 again today, I'm going to tell you, no, I gave you $10 yesterday. I'm not giving it to you again. Basic English. So what are you dealing with? The motive, right? English, basic, fifth grade information is what we're dealing with. So the motives of these people are warping, manipulating God's word to number one, say what they wanted to say to be invested in them. This book right here, guys, is uh, very dangerous is what it is. This book is a sword, a sword, a, a sword. Um, you can hurt yourself and hurt somebody else very bad with it. Over here, he says, oh, ye Corinthians, our mouth is open to you. Our heart is enlarged. You are not straightening us, but you are straightening your own bowels. Straightening your own bowels. What's that mean? All 44,000 denominations are straightened in their own bowels. Why? Well, number one, not one denomination acknowledges the things that Paul writes, all the commandments of the Lord. Do you know that? Do you know why? Because it's going to cost them their job. They're, that's what it is to them, a job. You mean you get paid to study God's word and I do it because I just love God? You get paid to stand up behind that pulpit and preach messages and we're doing it every single day, two times a day because we just love God. The motive, guys, they can't cut their hand to spite their face. So for you to sit back and say, hey, our Lord and Savior didn't reconcile the world at Calvary, you're a bald-faced liar is what you are. If I could get close enough to you, I'll slap your teeth out your mouth. 
Don't you ever, ever disrespect all our Lord and Savior like that. Without the proper instructions, you can't walk upright. You know, it's like we drove by yesterday and this lady had this condition. She was like this. I'm like, why did somebody walk around like that? You know, it's because you're a creature of a habit is what you are. This lady's been sitting like this for the past 20 years. What's she been doing for 20 years? Obviously not studying the word of God. Have you been sitting there playing with jewels so long that your neck creeped down and stays like that? An object in motion stays in motion, right? Until an equal or opposite emotion is applied. So until our Lord and Savior calls us up in the clouds, we're going to continue to keep studying to show ourselves approved by God, right? So here's what we deal with, just like this guy, hub above the highway, right? I don't know what you're talking about. I've never heard this information before. This is the shock and the awe. What do you mean? Who do you think you are? As unknown and yet well known. As dying and behold we live. As chastened and not killed. As sorrowful yet always rejoicing. As poor yet making many rich. We don't want anything in this life. All we want is Jesus Christ. What do you want? Good morning to you brother. Grace and peace. We're happy to have you back. What are you wanting? You want to be with God? Here you go down to verse 14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? Right? You don't just call it what it is. All 44,000 denominations are Majority unbelievers. Why? They're not established by Paul's doctrine. They're not saved. They might believe that Jesus Christ died for their sins, but they'll never in a million years know that that's the gospel. They'll never receive the hope, the peace, the comfort, the assurance, the power, or the sound mind that comes along with having a helmet of salvation on. The helmet of salvation. Right? Here's a question. Do dead men have thoughts? Do dead men have thoughts? What are dead men doing? Resting in God's grace. Good morning, Mitch. All right, guys. We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. We're going to walk through the chapter is what we're going to do this morning. Uh, well, there are uh, 16 verses in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. I don't know how long it's going to take us to get through it, uh, but we'll continue to press on is what we do. I know that we are vessels, that it's our job to shine the light, that it's only a matter of time before we do or say something that's going to give you that light bulb moment. And when you get that light bulb moment, guys, and you can see what God is doing, you'll never unsee it. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, guys. I was going to take the day off, but I couldn't let y'all down. I was like, man, I can't let him down. Dan, we're happy to have you here, brother. Very good, Sister Renee. John, you and Brother Ryan were live exactly at the same time yesterday. And I'm going to tell you guys, our Brother Ryan is, uh, that brother special is what he is. He reminds me of Apollos. Apollos was an eloquent man from Africa, just like Ryan. Priscilla and Aquila. There it is, Aquila. <laughs> met Apollos. And they showed him a more excellent way. So our brother Ryan was pretty sharp um, in the word of God uh, before he came across us. 
after he's came across us, our brother Ryan is a forced to be reckoned with. I didn't really get to respond too much to you yesterday or to interact because I was cutting the grass the same time you was you was doing your live. But I was thinking to myself, what a blessing it is to have this brother be a part of us and our family. What a blessing it is for Ryan to have the knowledge that he does. And he has a fantastic message is what he does. So, brother, my advice to you might be like this. It's, sometimes it's hard to get started. You know, I think we started off with six people in the live. Uh, you keep putting that time in and the people are going to catch on. They're going to come over there. They're going to know that Ryan knows what he's talking about. They're going to sit down and they're going to listen. Don't be discouraged. The best advice that I can give you is to be consistent. Do what you say you're going to do. If you say you're coming out of time, be there at that time. If you're not there at that time, these people are like uh, little kids. They get mad. They get easily deceived. They'll forget about you having your study. They'll be watching Pat say Jack in no time. But if you can get in their minds, we're going to be live tonight. We're going to be live tonight. We're going to be live tonight. They'll be looking for you to be live tonight versus looking for Pat Sajak. Well, Ryan, my hat goes off to you, brother. I salute you. I love you. Our brother John uh, Zabtowski uh, was live yesterday. Our brother John, John is a, another special um, brother in Christ. Y'all better be there. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. I don't know what's going on with Preacher John. Did the big bad wolf come huff and puff and blow his house down? That's why I said, little girl, you don't even know what the big bad wolf is doing outside. Little pig, little pig, let me in. Like by the hair, right my chinny, chin, chin. You don't know what he's doing out there. She said, yes, I do, Papa. I said, okay. Well, what's he going to do then? She said, he's going to huff and he's going to puff. It's what he's going to do, Papa. I said, no, he's not going to huff and puff. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 7, guys, verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from filthiness of flesh and spirit. Filthiness would include false doctrine. Carrie, she just turned seven. She just turned seven. I was supposed to see her this weekend, but we went to the camp out, so I got to uh, miss out on my granddaughter. Uh, seems like uh, ever since uh, her parents have split up, my time with her has gone to nothing. I used to spend all the time in the world with her that I could, and now I don't seem like I get to spend any time at all with her. Uh, that's where I was uh, invited uh, my son and her grandbaby to come to the camp out with us, and I got the whole, uh, we're, we're, we're just not ready for that, Dad. We're not ready to see you spitting and you and aggressive and you raising your voice out there. We're not ready for that. And what they do is they automatically form an opinion on you and never have heard you talk one time. Never heard anything you have to say. Nothing. So what I deal with are people who don't watch us at all or listen to us at all and then have the nerve to pick up the telephone and tell me what they think the Word of God says. And I'm like, where did you come up with that at? You just made it up? Because you could stop making it up and prove it. Prove it. Right? Prove it. Show me one verse in this Bible that says you're not forgiven until you believe. Show it to me. What's the real reason they don't want to listen to you? Pride. Pride. I was 20 years old. I knew everything that there was to know too. I was the baddest person on this earth. And then when you look back, you're thinking to yourself, you're just a child. You're not very mature. You're easily upset, number one. You don't have any patience. Fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. 
Let's go into verse two. Receive us, have we have wronged no man. You see that? Receive us, we have wronged no man. So immediately you've got some clown coming in here on our platform talking about, you seem angry. You've got the discernment of a cardboard box is what you've got, right? You need to resubscribe for more discernment because you ain't got it. That's outstanding, brother. Everything that they've learned is wrong. Everything is wrong. Now, me, I've learned this information. I've fallen back. I did sit down. I did get rooted and grounded and established before I went out here and started engaging in spiritual warfare because I got on the phone with family members and I started sharing with them the information that I was learning and they were rejecting it. Rejecting it. Just like, um, you know, you hear somebody say, oh, we need the red letters. Wrong. Johnny, I have seen them. We flat out proved them wrong. But the truth is, they don't want to move from their position. So you say, hey, man, where's the temple? Right? 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles tall. Where's the temple? Not there. Is death and Hades thrown into the fire yet? Are we still feeling pain? Are we still aging? Oh, we are. Well, then we just aren't there yet. Did God write his laws in their hearts? Do they still have to tell their neighbor about God? Last time I checked, they still have no idea who Jesus Christ is. Is there still war? Is there still rumors of war? Yep. How come Jesus Jesus didn't return in 70 AD? So that's where we are, Justin. So what does that mean? Well, this is where we get out of our pride. Get out of your feelings. Get out of the you you feeling wrong. And let's just let God's word do the talking. Right? Let's just let God's word do the talking. No more, no less. What does God say? The outstanding, Mitch. You nailed it. You nailed it, Mitch. That's, that's why Jesus Christ didn't return in 70 AD, the revelation of the mystery. So not just the 44,000 denominations are ignorant to this time of grace. The 70 ADers are as well. Jesus Christ came from heaven in Acts 9 and revealed this time of grace to the apostle Paul. We've been under grace for 1,994 years. Good morning, B. King. Outstanding, outstanding, sister. I'm glad to see that you are. You've got it. You you can recall those those uh, messages. That's right, Brian. All right, guys. We are in Second Corinthians seven. I just read verse two. Let's go into verse three. I speak this not to condemn you, for I have said before that you are in our hearts to die and to live with you. Great is my boldness of speech towards you. Great is my glory of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in all our tribulation. For when we were come to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. We were troubled on every side. Without, without were fightings, within were fears. Nevertheless, God that comforted those that are cast down comforted us by the coming of Titus. Titus. That's where we talk about that brother in Christ showing up and being refreshed. That's what we all got at the camp out. That's what I got at the camp out. I saw David and David refreshed me is what happened, right? I said, man, David's got a lot of energy. How does David get all this energy? I see, you know, David's throwing beanbags. David's throwing washers. David's fishing. David's running around over here. David's trying to see David flying up in his car. There's David over here. Dan and Dave, Dan and Dave, Dan and Dave, like the decathlon, right? Like Dan and Dave, at it again. Dan and Dave, Dan and Dave, Dan and Dave. Shh. Titus, comforted. Somebody else comes along that believes the same thing that you do, guys. You'll get comforted. This is where you heard me talking about the other day. What are you going to do when you roll up on your brother? You see him engaging in spiritual warfare. You're just going to walk by him? 
This is what you're doing. Your brother is engaging in spiritual warfare and you're walking by. I need help. Hello? But then he don't need help, does he? I've got God with me. You know what that means? That anything I set my hand to is blessed. So what do you think is going to happen when I decide to set my hand to this message of reconciliation? Titus, that's my boy in case you don't know. And not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you when he had told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me so that the rejoice that I rejoiced the more. For though I made you sorry with the letter, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 1, do I not repent? I do not repent. Though I did not repent, I do for I perceive the same epistle has made you sorry, though it for it was but for a season. That season. What was he rebuking him for? Do y'all remember? This is something that's important. You guys need to know why, what was going on in the Corinthians church. Why was Paul writing them letters of correction? Well, somebody wrote them back and told him, hey man, this guy's sleeping with his dad's wife. It's causing problems inside of the church. Sexual immorality is still causing problems inside of the church. Why? Because you're dealing with some carnal-minded baby in Christ that's supposed to be a leader. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Sorrow of the world. We can look and see this world is going to hell in the handbasket fast. That's going to discourage you guys. That's going to depress you. What are you doing? Shannon? I'm going to have to retire and hand it over to y'all. Ryan, you want, to, you want to do Bible study at 5 a.m.? You know how nice it would be to come out here with my cup of coffee and prop my feet up and go, oh, man, go Ryan, go Ryan, go Ryan, yeah! What did he say? That lady was like, Hercules, 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 Hercules. You got to go to that bathroom, right? You got to tell them. You got to go, man, I got to go do the same thing they do at Lowe's. I say, hey, man, do you know where I can find me some, some, um, I don't know, some tape or something like that? And they're like, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Stay right here. How about, can you find a car? You know what? You go to Lowe's, can you find a cart? That's like finding the Bible in the church. They're out in the parking lot, right? That's where all the, the carts are. That's where all the Bibles are, too. I know, brother. We ain't going nowhere. My job is to get you ready for the judgment seat of Christ. If you don't have a ministry, you're not ready for the judgment seat of Christ. Even though the faith of Abraham is counted as righteousness, if you're okay doing nothing, then I'm okay with you doing nothing, too. If you want to be glory, uh, bring glory to the Lord, then we've got to get our ministry right. What are we telling people about our Lord? We know we have an inward man and an outward man, right? Heaven and the earth, seen, unseen. Good morning, man. That's why I said it's my main squeeze. I want to squeeze the cheese and don't say please. That's what our that's my wood shop teacher used to say all the time. This is my main squeeze. And he used to be like, hey, Richard. And I'm like, my name ain't Richard. He was like, it says right here your name is Richard. I'm calling you Richard. I'm like, well, you won't want to give me an answer, you then will it? Nobody answers that. Don't, don't answer that dude. They'd be like, hey man, he's calling your name. I said, that's not my name. Somebody was sleeping with their dad's wife in the Corinthians church. It was causing all kinds of strife. It was causing problems. That's where Paul said, I was not sorry for the letter that I sent to you. For the only made you sorry for a season. Remember, Paul said, get rid of that person. Deliver them to Satan so they can learn. 
And the second letter of correction, Paul's saying we need to forgive that guy that was sleeping with his dad's wife. Why? Lest we, Satan take advantage of us, right? For we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. We don't forgive because we have to. We forgive because we want to. We forgive because we're forgiven. So we go over here and you say, um, verse 10, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation to not be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death, right? Okay, OG, you're going to have to miss the rapture to do that, just in case you, just so you know, if you want to show me your works, you're going to have to endure. For behold, the same thing that you sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, indignation, they can't even tell what that word is right there, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement, vehement, vehement. Desire what zeal, what revenge, and all things you have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Clear. We're unmovable is what we are. Wherefore, though I wrote unto you, I did it not for his cause that had done the wrong, nor for the cause that suffered the wrong, but for our care that you in the sight of God might appear unto you, but all, that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you. Remember, we were cherished you and took care of you like a mother nurses her children. We didn't handle the word of God deceitfully. We weren't self-seeking. We weren't wearing a mask trying to cover up greed. Good morning to you, Jeanette. You're welcome to come up here with me if you got a minute, sister. If you don't have a minute, um, then you just don't have a minute. It's okay. But I just want you to know I love you. And I want to tell you guys this, that we've been talking about. Sometimes, guys, it's hard to get out of those thoughts. Sometimes it's hard to get out of our own prison. And if we can get out of those thoughts, get back into the word of God, guys, we can stay focused. We can keep on pressing on, doing what God wants us to do. When we throw our hands up in the air and going, woe is me, woe is me, right? My son was sleeping with my wife. What am I going to do now, man? Oh, no, man. My whole life is ruined, man. He's taking all my stuff and my wife, man. Why want to wear my underwear too, man? You want to wear my underwear? It's called no respect, no this is my dad, right? Why? Why was there no respect? The relationship. Relationship was more like this instead of like this. The same thing with your child. Do you are you the, the dad that goes when you speak to me you say sir? Yes, sir, Dean King, sir, right away, sir. Aye, aye, Captain. That's what's happening in your family. You're creating prisoners of what you're doing. You're not creating children. You be the one your child runs to, not the one your child runs from. If you don't know what's going on in your child's life, you're a sad individual. You need to know what's going on in your child's life. How's your day going? How's your job going? How's everything going with you? Hey, talk to me. This is why they sat down at the kitchen table at nighttime and ate dinner so they can tell you, hey, teacher kicked me out of class today. Why? Because I balled up a big piece of clay and put it in the shape of a baseball when she turned around I beamed it at the chalkboard and said, pow, right on the chalkboard. And you know what? She turned around and they were all pointing at me. I was like, Something's going on over there. Did you hear it? Something's moving. I think they're back. I found a possum down there one day. That's why I like shook. He's like, hey, there's been things down there before. Old Mr. Possum was right mad when we caught him. Well, I don't like getting ran upon, right? You get ran up on. Watch. We start talking about the word of God and every little thing got to start popping off, right? Can't handle all that. Yeah, that's what they said. You was a dreamer. I heard, I'm supposed to be on vacation right now, Danny. 
The grass is going to be always greener on the other side. The grass is going to be greener where you water it. Right? What you are seeing is somebody else that's put in their time, somebody else that's worked their tail off to get what they got. Some people don't have to work hard as others. Some people got to give into them. Like Baron Trump. That boy ain't worked one day in his life and he's getting ready to come off and be one of the richest people that there is. Right? How much time do you think Donald spent with his son? How educated is Baron Trump? Or is it other people that are teaching Baron Trump while Donald Trump's running around drinking a Diet Dr. Pepper or Diet Coke or something like that, right? Your offspring, what's going to happen with all the money? What did I say? That dude's worth, you know how much money that dude's worth? What are you doing with this money that you got? Diddy wants to take a shopping with the money he's got. The Hemans desire what zeal, what revenge, and all things ye have approved yourself to be clear in this matter. Wherefore, though I wrote unto you, I did it not for his cause that he had done the wrong, nor for his cause that suffered the wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you. Therefore, we were comforted in your comfort. Yea, and the exceeding the more joy, we for the joy of Titus, because his spirit was refreshed by you all. So Titus refreshed them and they refreshed Titus. You should have seen it, man. I'm over there refreshed by Preacher John. All of a sudden I turn around and look. Preacher John got an F-150 with a great big John 316 license plate on the front of it. I'm like, Preacher John, what is this? Preacher John, what are you doing with a John 316 license plate? said it was a great conversation starter. And I'm sure it is. Wherefore, though I wrote unto you, I did it not for his cause that had done the wrong, nor for his cause that suffered the wrong. Right? Verse 13, we were comforted, we were refreshed. Verse 14, for I have boasted anything to him of you. I'm not ashamed, but as we speak all things to you in truth, even so are boasting which I made before Titus is found in truth. And his inward, inward affliction is more abundant toward you all while he remembereth it, the obedience of him. You all, how with fear and trembling you received him. I rejoice, therefore, that I have confidence in you in all things. Second Corinthians chapter 7, guys. Man, and this is where you go through seven, eight, nine. I think they're going to be rough. All the way till 11. 11, you'll see the light come back. Well, I mean, the light is there because the word of God is the light. But I mean, like, boom, it gets exciting again. Right? Exciting. Ah, Captain America. I've seen all your movies. It's so exciting to have you join us. Peace chasing, we are in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. You're just in time for dinner. Good morning, Shane. Grace and peace to you, brother. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises. Dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Perfecting. All right, we'll break it down. Having therefore these promises. What promises? Everlasting life. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Grace. Eternity. Let's find out. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse seven. That's what I was doing this morning. was trying to figure it out and just couldn't figure it out. For God has not called us to uncleanliness, but unto holiness. To holiness. Number one, get rid of the old man. How do you get rid of the old man? By focusing on Christ. Religion is trying to constantly repair the old man is what they're trying to do. Shane, grace and peace to you, brother. Let that old man go. The new man. Put on the new man. Right? First thing you have to do is stop lying. 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 
What do you mean? Every time his son went around his dad, he was checking out his dad's wife or girl. It was like, did he give her an old butt slap when she walked by? And just was like, don't tell dad. You know? Was he over there groping on this lady and her was too too scared because she knew that his pop was going to flip out if he found out that his son was grabbing on, the, on his stepmom's boobies. She showed me her boobies and I liked it. Promises, not fleshly promises like lust. Promises like absent from the body, present to the Lord, for we must all appear at that judgment seat. What are you going to do with that judgment seat? You going to tell God how you slept with your dad's wife? Ooh. Would it be worth it then? This is what I'm saying. Don't sleep with members of your family at all. This is where I was like, man, now that my brother died, is it my job to go over there and take care of his wife now and, and the two kids biblically? I was like, man, please don't, please don't be so. Don't, don't, don't you put that on me, Ricky Bobby. Don't put it on me. And then I read the scriptures and I was like, if she doesn't have any children. And I was like, well, they got two kids. Yeah. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God almighty. See, they trying to bound me down in there. If you live in West Virginia, I don't know. But as touching the brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you, for you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. To love one another. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Would you be okay with your son sleeping with your wife? No. Well, why are you sleeping with somebody else's wife? That's what's going on out here today. You're a, a, a backup chick, right? We call you a side chick is what you are. Uh, 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 hand me down. You know, you're a hand me down hoe from a yard sale, right? Why? Because you're okay being second best, right? You're not second best. You need to hold out till you find somebody that thinks that you're number one, right? Somebody that wants to be with you, somebody that values you, not somebody that's going to disrespect you and discard you and use you to their own benefit. It's two people working together toward a common goal, not one person doing everything. It's not going to work. Second Corinthians chapter seven, uh, verse, verse one still. All right, let's go look at first. That's five, two. I should have told you to stay there. I'm a little rusty. A little rusty this morning, guys. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. Oh, man, I stayed up all night long working on the message. For you yourselves know how perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Are we looking for the day of the Lord? Or are we looking for the day of Christ? The day of the Lord comes as a thief in the middle of the night. For when they say, who's they? Israel, peace and safety. Then sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with a child and they shall not escape. See that word escape? The author of Hebrews says, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? Isn't that something? Ooh, man, what are you escaping? Tribulation. This is what you've been saved from. Ooh, we're saved. Did you know that? You didn't even know you're saved? It's a great feeling to be saved. Dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness. Come into the light, Carolyn. Come into the light. A rum pum pum. A rum pum pum. Let's go Philippians chapter 3, 12 through 15. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 15. Not as though I had already attained or either were already perfect, but I follow after that if I may apprehend that which also I am apprehended of, Christ Jesus. I don't know if you got that or not. It's God's will for Christ to be formed inside of the believer. So just like it's God's will for Christ to be formed inside of the believer, we know it's God's will for us to be face to face with the King of Kings. So while he's longing for Christ to be formed inside of the believer, we're longing to be face to face in front of the King. Two people working together to achieve a common goal. You know, you start walking my way and I'll start walking yours. We'll meet in the middle. But eat that old Georgia pine. We gained a lot of ground if we both meet in the middle. Something like that. I don't know all the rest of the words. 
Shundalalalalala took over. I started feeling God's Holy Spirit come over top of me, and I was shundalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalal
You, all you're concerned about is dancing around and speaking in tongues and making somebody else think that you're something that you're not. Shannon, God bless you, brother. All things approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience, afflictions, and necessities and distresses. The patience says, well, you walk in the earth with Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry. You don't know the middle wall of petition separated us. When we know the answers on why somebody is the way that they are, right? You don't know that Jesus Christ only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You got a problem with that, right? So you got a problem with Jesus Christ only being sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And when we display the message properly, you want to attack us. And call us names and everything else you can think of because we put things in their proper place. Jesus Christ witnessed that at the right hand of God 1,994 years ago. It's official yesterday I blocked uh, Bishop Tom and his 91,000 followers because this guy's back at it again talking about hyper-dispensationalism. He doesn't even know about hyper-dispensationalism. He's talking about ultra, ultra combo. What you're doing, Bishop Tom, is making excuses not to be in sound doctrine. Sound doctrine is doctrine that's relevant to the time that it was written. For so somebody to say something like, oh man, what are you trying to say? We don't go by the words Jesus said. All of the Bible is what Jesus said. When's it going to register? Because you're going what Jesus Christ said in his earthly ministry versus what Jesus Christ did in his heavenly ministry. They don't know any better. You do. So this is where you're going to be able to say, man, he just can't get it. He don't know the middle wall partition was torn. He don't know the one year extension of mercy given to the nation of Israel. He don't know about Acts 9. He never read Romans 16, 25 through 26 or Romans chapter 2, verse 16. He's not approved by God. He doesn't study his Bible. So this is how you can have somebody walk past you every single day, get in their car, drive down to this AKA shithole and never grow in the knowledge of the Lord. And then have the audacity to turn around and come back and tell me when my face is buried in this Bible that I'm wrong. You're wrong. You can be baptized as a Levitical priesthood, you know, ceremonial baptisms. You can be baptized for remission of sins, baptized by the Holy Spirit, I mean, by fire. There's a lot of baptisms in our Bible. There's a lot of churches. You mean you get up, and something's just not right. I can't sleep, so I got up and decided I'd, I'd played bejeweled. That'd fix everything, right? Everybody else is running straight to hell. And we're running straight to our Bible and they can't see it. Why? The God of this world, they're men pleasers. Well, you could be baptized by uh, Noah's Ark is a type of baptism. The Red Sea is a type of baptism. Uh, Mississippi made, uh, we're baptized by one spirit into the body of Christ. It's a spiritual baptism that takes place. We're buried with him in baptism. Risen with him through the faith of the operation. So when he appears, so shall we appear with him in glory. That's the difference. The body of Christ is looking to be called up in the clouds with our Lord and Savior. This is where I've gotten my brother and sister all at. My brother and sister are in the clouds with my grandma and everywhere else. But my family's looking to inherit the earth. It's moronic. You just can't make it up. Nobody in my family spends the time in the Bible that I do. But none of them will listen. Why? They don't value what God's word says. They don't see, oh man, look at my boy. He's studying the word of God. Would you rather your son be studying the word of God or standing out here on the corner holding a cardboard sign up? Then you got a problem. So what's the shame is, just like the apostle Paul, the knowledge and wisdom of Jesus Christ is going to cost you everything.
It's costing me my family. It's costing me friends. It's it probably cost me a couple jobs. The knowledge and wisdom of Jesus Christ is, has costed me complete. I'm, you mean you don't want to come down to the church and watch your knees get baptized? Hell no, I don't want to watch nothing like that. Why? Because nobody should be being baptized today. We're baptized by one spirit into death. Don't you want to come down under the bridge on Sunday and help us hand out hot dogs? There's no point. Nobody in the 44,000 denominations know, even knows the gospel of our salvation. They're saved by John 3, 16. John 4, 22. That means for 65 years, they've never flipped their Bible over one page. One page. Just like the Acts 2.38. Acts 2.38 is my gospel. Okay, read Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Come on, man, keep reading. Israel don't get saved until judgment day. Are you Israel? Identity. Who are you? Well, that's where we find out our Bible has times in it. Three times. Past, present, and future. What's religion doing? Taking a times past doctrine, applying it into but now time. That's what Satan does. Satan operates the Baptist church. Satan operates the Pentecostal church. Satan operates the Catholic church. Satan operates the Mormon church. Satan operates the Methodist. He operates all 44,000 lies. Because there's one truth. One truth. They're not approved by God. None of them. What do you mean? Predestined, kept secret from the creation of the world. What's that mean? Don't mean nothing to these people. Why not? Because nobody's home. They've been indoctrinated by Bob Jones. You know what kind of name is Bob Jones? Who would have ever gave a guy a, a, a university to begin with? I couldn't believe it. I saw it. I heard Dr. Roman talk about Bob Jones University, university anymore, but I didn't, I didn't act like, man, it was really a Bob Jones? Really? All this time? Yeah. Bob Jones. That means people are paying money to go down there to be deceived when it comes to the word of God. They have been schooled over there at Bob Jones University, but the problem with that, brother, is they won't be corrected. So 2 Corinthians chapter 7, guys, we're still in verse 1. Uh, no, we're down in verse 2 now. Receive us, right? Received us. We wrong no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. Defrauded with no man, right? Right? Well, guess what you are, Mississippi? You're blocked. Nice to meet you. See you later. Received us as we have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. Let's go look at First Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. One of the ways that I used to get it, guys, is like when that whistle blows on a football practice, it stops. As soon as that quarterback says, hut, and that ball moves, boom, it starts. So what you do is you turn it on, you turn it off. You turn it on, you turn it off. Turn it on, turn it off. Turn it on, turn it off. Can you? If you can, you can control your emotions. If you can't turn it off and you got to run over the hill, through the woods, over to grandma's house and scream to the top of your lungs, yo! You might be angry, right? Is he angry? No. Is he frustrated? No. This is just how he talks. That's just who he is, right? Shane, very good, brother. Very good, brother. That's outstanding. Our brother Shane right here blew me away out there, guys. He showed up at the campground about 1030. And it stayed out there in his van all night long. I felt horrible. I was like, man, my brother is out there sleeping in his car. I should be over there with him. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor of guile. Nor of guile. But as we were allowed, you see that? We were allowed of God. 
to be put in trust with the gospel. But even so, we speak not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. As you can see, uh, we're not man pleasers. You weren't fine, brother. I wanted you to be in there with me. Uh, for if at neither time we use flattering words, as you know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is our witness. Not of men sought we glory, neither of you nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. We were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherishes her children. So being affectionate to serious of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also of our own souls, because you were dear unto us. Dear. Right? So what you have are people who are love God enough to say, well, you know what? I'm going to hit this live button and tell somebody about our Lord and Savior. And the whole time they're telling somebody about our Lord and Savior, they're being attacked over character flaws. Why? Because the people that are attacking the character flaws don't know how to make right judgment. The spiritual man judges all things, and yet for him there is no judgment. We don't judge by an outward appearance anymore. And that's what they do. That's where Paul said in the last days they won't endure sound doctrine. You just saw it. You're too angry. You're too angry. You're too angry. You can't say, oh, I've never heard this information before one time in ever that I've been sitting inside of a church. But you want to talk about somebody being angry. Right? Now, I guess they haven't fallen short of that glory, Justin. I can think that they're still self-righteous. Right? That God's going to love them whether they're angry or not. Oh, man, the top shirt of my shirt isn't buttoned up. Does that mean God doesn't love me? That's what the Muslims think. They think God don't love you if you eat some pork. Not today, Brian. I appreciate the offer, though. I got to get into this Bible study, and we're only in verse 2. So let's go look at Colossians 4.10. Colossians chapter 4, verse 10. Aristocrats. My fellow prisoner saluteth you and Marcus, sister's son to Barnabas, touching of whom you received commandments. If he come unto you, receive him. What was happening? Paul was given authority to these people. Like who? Like Titius and Onesimus. They wrote the book of Colossians. Paul couldn't be there. So he sent these people out there to write back and tell them the affairs. Time out. Oh, What's going on over there? You see, this was a different type of busybody. It wasn't the busybody. Was, How's their job going? Did they eat lunch today? Did they get fired? I heard they got a raise. Did they got to work this weekend? Blah, 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 blah. You see CNN News? No, Paul is saying, are they growing the knowledge of the Lord? Are they established the mind doctrine? What's going on with these people? And as we know, Paul received word back that somebody was sleeping with their dad's wife in the church. What do we do about this? Well, the answer would be kick them both out. You know, let's go back in time. King Solomon, there were two mothers arguing over a child. Who did this child belong to? Solomon said, cut the child in half. Give one of the mothers half the child and give the other mother the half the other half of the child. That'll fix the problem, right? <clears throat> and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to the God and the Father by him. What are you doing in word or deed? So that you can get money stuffed in your pockets. You've gotten good at... <laughs> Got good at making it up. That's what we're seeing. They make it up. They're not biblically sound or good rooted. Caroline. Hello. <laughs> good one, Caroline. You want a rock bottom? I'm going to hit you in the rock bottom. <laughs> All right, now. Come on. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, guys, verse 2 still. You know how many people get up and go to church on Sunday that can't even spell 2 Corinthians chapter 7. But they represent Jesus. No, you represent you. And your carnal-minded heart is what you represent. 
Uh, that was Colossians 4.10, Philippians 2.29, Philippians chapter 2, verse 29. So if she's up, so that means we could turn up now, guys. 29, receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness and hold such in reputation because for the work of Christ, he was nigh unto death, not regarded his life to supply your lack of service toward me. Do you see this? You ready for Danny to start screaming? We're going to back up. 25, yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Ephoratus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger, he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick. He was sick. Ephoratus was sick. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death. Unto death. God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I set him therefore the more carefully, that when you see him again, you may rejoice, and that I may be the less sorrowful. This is what I'm finding out. We can't count on anybody. Can I count on you? Probably not. Depends on how you feel. Let's go on into verse 3. I speak this not to condemn you, for I have said before that you are in our hearts to die and to live with you. We've got a lot of verses here. I don't think we're going to read but one or two of them. I'm going 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 through 5. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 4 through 5. I don't know, man, if I could drop a deuce with somebody yelling at me the whole time. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Well, what is the power of God? The resurrection. That's where the power comes from. Jesus Christ raised from the dead. What does this mean? Well, obviously, we're not walking the earth with Jesus in his earthly ministry anymore. He rose from the dead. What else happened? He went and sat at the right hand of God. Now what's he doing? He's sealing spirits. Why? Because this time of grace is going to end with the shout of an archangel and the body of Christ is called up in the clouds. This is all a foreign language. Foreign. I can't understand the words coming out of your mouth. What are you looking for? That's going to determine your destination. We're looking for Jesus Christ to jerk those clouds back and call us up with the shout of an archangel while Israel is looking for that city to come down out of the clouds in Revelation 22. That's a dead giveaway, right? Thank you, Conan. We just discussed the ends of our destination and their destination, right? Somebody should have been going, you mean Matthew 5, 5 says that the meek shall inherit the earth, that that's Israel, that the body of Christ is blessed above all spiritual blessings and seated where? In heavenly places. So if my brother and my sister are in the clouds with our Lord and Savior, that's where I'm going. Where are you going? The opposite way? You're going downtown, Julie Brown. If you ain't coming with us, you be outside the gun line. You go outside the gun line, there's going to be problems. So what do you have? You've got 44,000 denominations looking to inherit the earth when we should be looking for the Lord Jesus Christ to come get us in the clouds. Isn't that a shame? This is just what we believe, Danny. No, no. We got one Lord, one faith, one walk. Why are you stuck back before Jesus Christ died on that cross? You don't know any better, obviously. Don't know any better, Danny. You mean every single time you go to church, you're in Matthew? 
You want to tell you the answer? Matthew puts money in the offering plate. Romans through Philemon gets people up and sets them free. The goal ain't to have a church building. You are the church building. Is Christ inside of you? Well, I sure can't tell. Remember, they were refreshed by the coming of Titus. Titus showed up and they were like, hey man, that's my brother in Christ. What are you dealing with? People that are showing up and adding to you, to, to, to what's going on. Not taking it away. You're just making things worse. You're trying to help, but in reality, you're making things worse because you're causing confusion is what you're doing. So then you deal with that jackass that says, I don't like your tone. I don't like your mannerisms. So that's going to make me not listen to what you have to say. If our gospel's hid, it's hid from those who are lost. Not everybody's coming with us. Are you coming with us? Then you might want to start taking steps in the right direction. These people have been sitting in church for 65 years and have never heard the gospel of our salvation. This is this is this is unreal. We read it, we come across it, we're blown away. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. What? Which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. You see that? By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory of what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. Right? And that he was buried, that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. If you believe that, you're Ephesians 1.13, in whom you also trusted. After that, you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. You were then sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession. There's no need to argue about it. Just be corrected and move on. That's basic English right there. That 44,000 denominations can't get. 44,000 denominations is nothing short of confusion, guys. God is not the author of confusion. So can all 44,000 be wrong? Yes. Why? How are they wrong? None of them give Paul the authority that was given to him by Jesus Christ. If you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, grace comes from the Apostle Paul. You can't live under grace and then get your instructions from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It just don't work like that. If you're under grace, you need to get your instructions from Paul. Well, what did Paul write? Romans through Philemon. That's this time of grace. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, if you don't know, was during Jesus' earthly ministry. Well, what about Hebrews through Revelation? We call that tribulation doctrine. Judgment day, you know, death and Hades get tossed into the fire. Past, present, future. You know, today, Danny's sitting in the chair. Yesterday, he was at work. Tomorrow, where's Danny going to be? Somewhere else. We don't know yet. Jesus Christ walking in his earthly ministry didn't just freeze right there. I've only been sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This means that at the resurrection... The Gentiles got grafted in. The Gentiles now were brought nigh. The Gentiles now had an opportunity to be saved. So we went from, from the fall of Israel to the world. No longer about a nation. Now it's about the world. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. The Jew first and also the Greek. One in Christ. Right? One. Galatians 3.28. Neither Jew nor Greek, bond or free, male or female. But we're all one in Christ. Why don't somebody deliver that to the 44,000 denominations? Are 44,000 denominations going to stand at the judgment seat? Nope. Entire congregations are going to be left. And the pastor is going to be blamed. It's his job to prepare the congregation to stand at the judgment seat. And he's not. He's mixing law and grace together. James says faith without deeds is dead. They are valuing James next to Jesus. This is what you're doing. We don't value certain authors over certain authors. All of the scriptures is equally important, depending on what time you're in. 
is going to determine where you get your instructions from. Are you under the law? Then you might want to get your instructions from Moses. Starting to make sense? That's right, J.Y. All you have to do is read the Bible. So what's Satan doing? Keeping people from reading the Bible. How? Any means necessary. Well, I don't want Satan want you reading the Bible. Well, number one, he don't want you to know that everything you learned in your life is garbage. Garbage. All 44,000 denominations are straight up garbage or what they are. This is why you can go to five churches, five different Bibles, five different ways to be saved, and all five of them be wrong. Takes one to know one, right? Yeah. You had to go through those five different denominations to find out the truth. It didn't just get presented to you, did it? No, I had to find out for myself. And that's what you got to do is find out for yourself. There's only two times you're taught. The time that they teach you and the time you educate yourself. Why aren't you educating yourself? I was going to go take some online courses. I was going to see about getting a bachelor's degree. You know, back when I was little, I wanted to be a Boy Scout or a, a Sortho or something cool. Don't you want to do something with your life? Idle time, idle time. And this is where I'm telling you, it's hard to get out of those thoughts. Some people waller in those thoughts. And this is where we're telling you to stay busy. Just find something to do. Pick up the phone, call somebody. If you can transform your mind, that's where the peace, the hope, the comfort, the assurance comes in. You guys see me start getting out of character because I love you enough to flip out on you, to tell you that that's wrong. What are you doing? You're going to hurt yourself like that. See, I can yell and scream to back up, back up, back up. You're at the edge. You're at the edge. You're at the edge. Once you fall, there's no hope for you. Just like at the bar, I would say, you got to go, you got to go, you got to go. And it wasn't until I put my hands on you that you actually moved. Like, what do you mean all of a sudden I'm going to the door? Yeah. You thought you was in control. Second Corinthians chapter 7. That takes us down into verse 3. Where we are, verse 3. That says, Deuteronomy. That I can't read. It might be Deuteronomy 11, 11. It could be Deuteronomy 13, 11. We don't know. That's right, brother. We don't mute people. Why? Because we're dangerous. Don't you understand what's happening? Listen, when you go over to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 2, and you read your Bible and you say, hmm, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God committed unto me for my trust. No, no. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given to me to you word, how by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote a four and a few words whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. That's basic, right? What did that just do? If you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, that just took the focus off of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and Put it on Ephesians chapter 2 is what it did. God don't dwell in man-made buildings anymore. God dwells inside of the believer. That's where God's Holy Spirit is. It's called the mystery of godliness. Christ being formed inside of the believer. Christ isn't being formed inside of some garbage can building, is he? That's what I was watching last night. The guy's name was Oral Roberts. The guy's abandoned, uh, abandoned church is still over there. I was like, well, why don't we go re 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 refill it in there? And we can make any any building a good place to to serve the Lord at, as long as we know that God's not in that building, that He's inside of you. That's what's important. We can have fellowship anywhere in the in an alley, in the bottom of a ditch. Listen, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. Well, you know, when I graduated, everybody else was getting cars and cards and all this stuff for graduating. I got an Oral Roberts Bible. I had a mistake in it.
I'll just tell you the truth. I was pissed off when I got this Bible. I was like, man, I done worked my ass off to go through high school, man. Did all this stuff on my own. Everything in the whole world you could have got me for graduating high school, you brought me a Bible. A Bible is supposed to be just something you just give somebody because you want to just give them something nice. Not because you want to use it for, for a gift for, for graduating. How'd that make me feel, you know, when my friends were over there with a brand new car off the lot and I'm sitting there with a the Bible? I never read that Bible. Not even interested in it. One day I did get interested in that Bible. And that's how I found out the mistakes were in it. I had two 1 Corinthians chapter 1s, um, like three pages apart. It was just a misprint is all it was. Uh, things like that can happen in the printing process. I never would have found something like that out if I didn't actually take the time to read the Bible. So that's what we're dealing with, people that just won't take the time to read the Bible. Yeah, I still have it, Meg. I'll show it to you. Um, told my dad about it, so he reached out to somebody, and they were uh, almost offering to, to replace the Bible, but uh, it's been so long um, since I had graduated. They just, no, nah, you're stuck with it now. So I'm like, man, I got a misprint Bible. That's rare, isn't it? Second Corinthians chapter 7, guys. Uh, let's do 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 11 and 12. Oh, ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you. Our heart is enlarged. You are not straightening us. You are straightening your own vows. All 44,000 denominations are straightening their own vows, right? The Latter-day Saints, Jehovah's Witnesses, they're all on their own, their own road. The Romans road, that's the Baptist church. They don't know how to take context in they're still baptizing people. Pentecostal church, they're drinking the poison and not be affected, right? Kyle Johnson, this is because Satan's attacking the word of God, that's why. Sounds to me like she just spent all that time with the dog outside and as soon as the dog went inside, she peed in the floor. That's what dogs are, the same thing as you and me as human beings are creatures of habit. If you want to take your dog out when you feel like it, the dog's going to poop and pee whenever it needs to pee and poop. Just like you hear some people say, well, my animal just don't use the bathroom that much. No, no, I'm sorry to inform you. Your animal uses the bathroom just as much as you do. How many times a day do you pee and poop? Three times you pee, maybe? Okay. Well, maybe they're doing the same thing. Just because you don't know about it doesn't mean that it's not happening. Maybe, you know, we can get some actual order going on. And once we get an order, we get on what we call a schedule. And next thing you know, you're a creature of habit. So this is why every single morning we're right here at 5 o'clock in the morning. No longer an issue or a problem to get going. We're now in the groove is what we are. It becomes second nature. It becomes habit is what it does. Just like when you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing you do? Go outside or go into the bathroom and pee, right? Well, the first thing that our dog does is run into the living room and pee on the brand new rug. Why? Well, they say once a dog pees on the floor or something like that, that smell is in there and they're all going to pee there forever. Well, these animals have peed on the floor so bad they have rotted the floor out. So Danny says, hey, I'm not fixing the floor if you just want to allow the dogs to just keep peeing on the floor. If you want to stop the dogs from peeing on the floor, we might be able to fix it. But the only way that you're going to understand how important that is and what comes along with it is for you to have to actually fix the floor so that you'll say, man, you mean I can avoid this just by taking my dog outside? Yeah. Why? Because you got hardwood floors and you got what we call a vapor barrier under that hardwood floor. So anything that gets spilled onto the hardwood floor runs down through there and sets under that vapor until what? One, it evaporates or two, it absorbs into the hardwood floor. So then you're talking about expansion and contracting. Expansion and contracting. Are you expanding and contracting? Do you increase in the summertime and sink in the wintertime? No. We're dead. Our life is our head in Christ. We're capable of being filled with fruit 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All right, I want to just tell you a couple of these to write down. I'm not reading all these. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 15. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 15. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. For the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. 
the bolder I get by opening my mouth for the Lord, the less people want anything to do with us. If you don't sound like my pastor, you don't speak with a lip, a lisp. You don't hold your hand like this when you walk, right? They just don't like me because I'm not soft. They don't like me because I'm not going to do what they say. That's right. He's never going to do what they say. He's going to always do what this says right here. He's not going to listen to me. They know he's not going to listen to them. What? They'll tell me something and Danny's going to be saying, what? What? Darkness is spreading. Charlie Murphy, right? Unity, unity, U-N-I-T-Y. All right, write this down. Um, 2 Corinthians 7, 12. 2 Corinthians 7, 12. Maybe? I can't tell. Second Corinthians 3, 2. How about we stop playing games and go to the next verse? Verse 4. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is in my glory and I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all of our tribulation. Right? Exceedingly joyful in all of our tribulation. You can believe whatever you want to believe. It can be wrong. But you can believe whatever you want to believe. What are we dealing with? People that never searched out or proved for what they believed. What? Nonsense. Nonsense. Great is my boldness. Let's do uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. Who comforteth us and all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith, wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. You see that? We're comforted by God, so we're trying to comfort you. How? For those who are troubled, what are you doing? Rest with us. Why? Because we've got a glorious appearing of the great God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's coming to get us. That's right, Renee, we're edifying one another. We need to be prepared, but what are we looking for? This is what's going to happen with Jake, Paul, and Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson was taught by this guy named Customato. He was a very well uh, uh, boxing trainer is what he was. Jake Paul been taught by YouTube. The natural things that Customato instilled in Mike Tyson are still going to come out when he's 60 years old. Jake Paul don't have any of those skills. He's just what we call a YouTube uh, sensation. Right? This is where I'm saying if you're big, bad, you're tough, go out here and put it to the test. Let's find out how tough you are. Jump in the MMA. Go out there and fight somebody that'll beat your face in. Because the truth is, you don't want your face to beat in. The truth is, you just like bringing pain to other people, right? Somebody out there is a little bit better, badder, and bigger, and taller than you are. Someone will come at you like a spider monkey. That was 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given to you by Jesus Christ that in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Do you see that? The testimony of Christ. What are they going around doing? Bragging about their own testimony, aren't they? I got a testimony. The Lord gave me a word for you. He said, if you set it at the stoplight long enough, the light will turn green. Like, no, he didn't. Oh, no. Nope. He told me what we were going to have for dinner tonight. No, he didn't. I'm sorry. He told me the winning numbers of the lottery tickets. Sorry. God does not speak outside of this Bible. So, so far, we've knocked out 44,000 denominations and people who are naming and claiming it, blabbing it and grabbing it and thinking that God is speaking to them. It sounded like Morgan Freeman. This is childish is what it is. So, maybe you guys can see that it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that there's a lot of things that are just garbage. So the more time and effort that we put into something, the more that we're going to guarantee to get the increase. 
So he starts saying, hey, I've been to this church and that church. I don't know if you guys knew it or not, but every Sunday I wanted to go to a different church. I didn't know about the denominations or that they taught different things or that each place believed something just a little bit different. I thought they were all churches of God and everybody just loved God. And uh, they were all brothers and sisters in Christ. And I just want to know them all. Once you start spending times, like I said, I watch TV and I didn't know Joseph Prince had a different message than Jesse Duplantis. I didn't know, uh, what was that guy's name? John MacArthur was a Calvinist. I was like, man, what is a Calvinist? And he's like, he says that God is okay with women being raped? That God's okay with murderers and things like that? That's John MacArthur. That's who you're listening to on TV. They don't broadcast his views, but they broadcast the message. Why? Because he pays for it. April, you are the church. No, we don't go to church. Why? Because one day, for some reason, we just decided to sit down and start reading our Bible. And it never ended. Right? See, that guy got his own God. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right, something was wrong. Couldn't figure out what it was. That's what it was. You are the church. So I started learning. Read it. Faith without deeds is dead. The faith of Christ justifies us. So I started going, what, 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 what happened? What happened? What happened? And if you'll see, guys, we keep laying it out there. We keep laying it out there. We keep laying it out there. John 3, 16. Well, what about John 4, 22? Right? Acts 2, 38. What about Acts 3, 19? Acts 3.19, comparing with Romans 16.25 through 26, what's in the middle of it? What's up, Mike? Acts 9. Paul says faith without deads. James says faith without deeds is dead. They say the opposite. What happened? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 7 and 8, with the shout of an archangel, the dead in Christ rose up. Right? So if we just look at it from a bird's eye view on the outside, going through it, we see this time of grace and in tribulation falling on the nation of Israel. They endure throughout the ages or to judgment day. Where's the body of Christ? Gone. So then they said, I just don't like the fact that he said that the bloodshed of Jesus Christ only covers this time of grace. Well, when did we ever give one damn about what you thought or what you liked? Is this what the Bible says? Until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Now, after this time of grace, then what, what, what happens? Are they trusted in the death, the burial, the resurrection? Or are they saved by the name of Jesus Christ? Hmm? The name. Dude, you ain't been over here for two seconds. And you've been running your mouth to me after you've been here for two seconds. I'm going to tell you right to your face. Shut up. Try shutting up once in a while. You might learn something. You've been here for two seconds. You got no idea what we're talking about or the context of what we're talking about. And it's going to come in here and start running your mouth. That's where, you know, it ought to be nice that they had it set up to where if you just came in late like this, it would automatically start you back at the beginning of the live again. You know what I mean? So you can go back to square one. You know, for some reason, these guys are so concerned with Josh and my... <laughs> What is this? Nonsense. Why? Because God chose to be glorified through Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. But when you go back and put our Lord and Savior back in the Hebrew language, you are ignorant to the fact that grace comes through the Greek. I love you too, James. Grace comes through the Greek. What are you doing? Taking it from the Greek and putting it back into Hebrew? You're going back in time. We're going the other way. We're going toward Judgment Day, toward the rapture, toward our blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior. 
If all you do is spend time in Jesus' earthly ministry, you're doing what we call circular reasoning. Time continued to go on. Time continued to go on. So this is where we say every year, oh, they say, uh, oh man, you can do the read the Bible in the year challenge, right? Well, I guess if they make it to where they're like that far from the end of their goal come January, what do they do? They just scratch all this. Start reading the Bible again in a year, Derek. And then what happens? This information back here never gets exposed. This information back here is never read. And that's what's been going on. The same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again. Spend more time in Jeremiah and Joel and Isaiah than you do in actually doctrine that concerns you as a believer. Satan's good, isn't he? Oh yeah, Satan's really good at what he does. He ain't got me though. Nope, not today. Satan. Devil went on down to Georgia. I'm going to have to find that spot. Meg, I need you to find that spot. Charlie Daniels told him. He said, I'll take your bet you're going to regret because I'm the best there ever, or something like that. Great is my boldness of speech towards you. And that's who we are. We are open our mouth boldly, number one, because we're just not ashamed. Philippians chapter 2, verse 7. And we've just been bouncing all around all kind of different Bible verses. Philippians chapter 2, verse 7. But made himself of no reputation and took upon the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Even the death of the cross. You see that? Now, we are under the microscope. So I'm going to prophesy something right now. You mark it down. You're getting ready to see Star Wars Jesus commit suicide. Think you won't. Some people aren't willing to forgive and move on as much as we are. This is why it's so important that you don't get sidetracked from what's going on. We've got a message of reconciliation. Can you stick to it? Can you stick to this message of reconciliation? Time's running out. These people need to be saved. I don't know. Option A, option B. Guess we'll never know. We'll never know. Was that our time? Yep. All right, guys, what we'll do then is we'll pick back up tomorrow morning. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. We'll pick up at verse 5 and continue to press on. Uh, thank you guys for your time. Today is uh, today is the day that the Lord has made. No, it's Thursday, right? Today is Thursday. One day closer. Yes, brother. Uh, the problem is I get tired. So that's what happened yesterday. I cut the grass. I edged it. I blew it off. And, uh, you know, by that time it was like... Uh, 10 minutes to 7. So I was listening to Brother Ryan and um, I was listening to uh, John Sotowski. A uh, little bit bouncing back and forth with those guys. So you guys know there are other avenues uh, to listen to people here. We have our sister Kat who's uh, who's very strong in the Lord. We got our, uh, Brother John Sotowski, Brother John Atbury. Uh, Ryan down there in Africa is very well. Uh, and uh, Dave is going to be coming on here about 10 o'clock this morning. I'm going to tell you guys, uh, you brothers and sisters in Christ that have been uh, taking those extra steps to to further your ministry, uh, my hat goes off to you. Uh, my hat goes off to you. I salute you. I know at times, guys, we may seem like we're very, we're very serious and that we are. Uh, and it's because I got so many people that are getting up from all over the, the earth to come join us for Bible study here at 5 o'clock in the morning on the East Coast. So I got to take it serious as well, guys, or they're just not going to be here. The word of God is something that we should take serious as a heart attack. And the reason is because the word of God changed my life. And I hope and pray the word of God 
works effectively in you and that you trust in the word of God and what Jesus said. Uh, if you don't know what God said, guys, this is from cover to cover. This is what God said. If you don't know what God said, that's, that's what Satan's going to use to attack you. He attacks us where we're, we're weak at, where we're weak. Grace and peace to you guys. We'll see you guys uh, seven o'clock right back here tonight, guys. Uh, Y'all take care. Enjoy your day. Love you guys.